So let's look at the GCD, the greatest common divisor. I want to connect with some stuff that's at the start of chapter five that's a bit on the theoretical side, a bit on the abstract side, and I want to make it a little more concrete. So this is going to be complementary to what's in 5.1 and really 5.2 in our book. Um, so if G is the GCD of two numbers, then one of the things we know is, of course, that G divides A and G divides B, and it's the biggest number that does both, okay? Um, but we have what's called the linear combination lemma in our book, which is that G then divides any linear com integer linear combination of A and B, any multiple of A plus any multiple of B. Because if G is a common factor in A and B, that's clearly going to be a common factor in those guys. Okay, so here's the situation we might have on the number line. We could imagine here's a number line, here's 0. That, by the way, is one of these guys. It is 0A plus 0B. Okay, and then we have this set of, you know, like all the multiples. I'm not going to try and draw it out with any particular idea about its structure so much. Um, this set of all the integer multiples, integer linear combinations of A and B, and let's call that set S. That's the set of all AX plus BY, such that X and Y are integers, let's say in Z, use the notation. Okay, and then so we're saying G is some number that divides everything in there. Okay, so maybe it's like right here. Maybe this is the picture. That it's some smaller number so that this distance here that an even number of multiples of that, or, or uh, sorry, an integer number of multiples of that gets you to here, and then some other integer multiple gets you to here, other integer multiple, so that this basic length is kind of a basic length unit for that set. So maybe that's the picture. Well, it turns out the picture is actually simpler than that, okay? And, but it motivates the, one motivation for the question, how exactly, how precisely can we say, how exactly does G relate to this set of linear combinations, okay? Um, so let me say it in another way, and then I'll show you how we really, we totally understand this already because of the amazing and beautiful Euclidean algorithm. So another way to say it is when can we solve the equation AX plus BY equals C. And so here's the situation. A and B are given, of course, and we'll, we'll get down to very explicit examples in a minute. A and B are given integers. Those are fixed for the whole discussion. And then I have some other number, C. C is also given. And I want to make C as a linear combination of those guys. Okay, so another way, and the x and the y, these are the variables. So it's just saying, can I make some third number, c, out of some linear combination of a and b, multiple of a plus multiple of b? Um, and if so, we'd like to figure out what the x and y is, maybe figure out how many solutions, that kind of thing. That's exactly the problem of a linear Diophantine equation. So that's... In fact, the name of the chapter is Solving Linear Diophantine Equations. And so this is really nothing more nor less than saying, is C an element of S? Because S was all the things you can make. And we could start making a bunch of stuff and sort of get a partial idea of what S looks like, but that wouldn't necessarily tell us all the things that are in S or whether something is not in S. So this is really asking for a very discrete, explicit description of that S. And what does this have to do? And so a way to restate what I just had before, what does this have to do with G, which is defined to be the GCD of AB? Okay. So various ways of, of thinking about why we would be interested in the set S and why, whether it has something to do with um, G or not, okay? So, so far, uh, sort of G goes into S, you know, divides into S. Um, so is it something that has to be smaller 
than everything in S, besides zero. Zero is kind of trivially in S, okay? So that's sort of the suggestion we have that it might be actually be something that's kind of smaller than anything in S. Um, but here's the deal. Let's do an actual com computation. Let's just take the GCD of, say, 484 and 152 using the Euclidean algorithm, our favorite thing. So this goes in, the 152 goes in three times, uh, 356, remainder 28. Now 152, uh, that's 5 times 28 because that gives you 140 plus 12. 28 is 2 times 12, 24 plus 4. And 12, ah, 3 times 4 plus 0. Okay, so that's signals that were done, and it signals that the previous remainder was the GCD. Okay, so what's the point of this computation right now? It's because if we look a little more closely at what happens with the Euclidean algorithm, we're going to discover something really interesting about how G relates to S. Okay, that's because, let's look up here at the first stage, 28. I'm going to solve that for the 28, 484 minus 3 times 152, or 1 times 44 plus a minus 3 times 152. That is in S. So that 28 remainder, just simply because exactly how division works, it is something that's a linear combination, integer linear combination of A and B, 484 and 152. This is going to be our A, that's our B. Okay. But wait a minute. What about 12? Let's solve this equation. 12 is 152 minus 5 times 28. Well, wait a minute. 28 was a linear combination of A and B, 44 and 152. And 152 certainly is, so let's see. That's going to be 1 times 152. I think you can still see this. So actually, let me, um, I'm going to have to scoot it in up here. I don't want to erase this stuff. Okay, so 12, can we still see that? Yeah. Is 1 times 152 minus 5 times, and then the 28 was 1 times 484 plus a minus 3 times 152. Okay, so you're going to get a, looks like a 16 times 152 minus 5 times 484. And these numbers are going to be very relevant when we really to turn this into a machine for solving equations very explicitly. But the main thing I want to point out is simply that's still in S. It's still an integer linear combination of A and B. Notice it's really, really important that, that X and Y, the coefficients, can be negative. Because what here I'm doing here is I'm taking a really big multiple of 152, I'm going way out by what steps 152, and then stepping out, stepping back by steps of 484, and I actually get this really small number. If I said that 12 was a combination of 152 and 44 with positive integer coefficients, it wouldn't make any sense. But it's, so it's really important that we can play them off against each other in this way. Okay. So that's true for 12. Well, it's true for 4 as well. Because we can solve that in terms of 28 and 12. If 28 and 12 are in S, so any combination is in S. So this guy is in S as well. This always is going to happen. When we use the Euclidean algorithm, we're basically, with just a little bit of solving and manipulating, we're basically displaying G as an element of S. It's actually not just fits into all linear combinations of A, of a and B. It is a linear combination of A and B. Okay, so this one's getting a little long, so I'll continue the story in the next video.